morning uh, after the State of the Onion speech, in my humble opinion, the best speech I've ever seen him make. I mean, if you want a leader who can speak well, well, there you have it. He's the Eddie Van Halen of speech makers. He's like Rush Limbaugh. He's quite the entertainer. The feel-good speaker of the year. It was brilliant uh, that he preempted the highest rated TV show on any network. His voter base would be sure to be taking the time to view that show at that very hour of the evening. And most of them probably did not have any idea that he had planned to uh, grace them with his presence as opposed to uh, Simon Cowell at all vacuous and unaware as the average Obama voter and his parents are. I'm sure they didn't have no idea that the State of the Onion was going to be last night. Isn't it ironic that Obama, who is in love with Obama, <laughs> preempts Drum roll, please. American Idol! <laughs> Another omen from the omen. Well, you know, to be a great entertainer, you have to have impeccable timing, right? I mean, he got that licked in dick, don't he? You gotta wash that gray right out of your hair. Well, he certainly did that last night, didn't he? He had a nice $4,000 haircut paid for by you and I. Or is it you and me? Who cares? He can't have the machine appearing worse for the wear. Uh, that would make his lazy uh, constituency lose hope, perhaps. Isn't that what he promised them? You get out there, Obama, and you tell them that you never told them that you could get it all done in the first year without anybody else's help. Because everybody has to be united uh, to do things your way. Even Republicans who actually don't have any real power at all, but you got to put most of the blame on them anyway. And their former leader, of course. You don't have to mention any names, just say, the last eight years, failed policy, and it was a mess when I got here. Even your voters should know who you're talking about. Imagine them all sitting there in front of their uh, TVs in their little humble little hovels where they are living, clapping their hands, if they're still watching. Because those uh, stodgy, wrinkled, pasty old Republicans, not one of which could possibly make as good a speech as you can, they are forcing the kind, caring, compassionate Democrats not to stray away from your flock and vote according to their individual opinion. You're the one who claims the rights to the concept of unity, not the Republicans. They got it all wrong. Unity is what you say it is. You demand that they have to reach across the chasm so your guys don't have to jump off the cliff and pay the ultimate sacrifice for your American scheme. If you could only make it appear bipartisan, that'd be good. That'd be good. Instead of every all the Democrats having to be in lockstep, looking like a bunch of fascists that they are. Of course, you run the risk that most of your base, distracted and delusional and dyslexic as uh, your base is, will have no idea at all what you're talking about. If they're still watching, keep it simple. Blame it on the way that things are done in this town. And backroom dip. Make sure that you deny making any backroom deals. Everybody in this town is so used to hearing you lie anyway. They'll just sit there and smile whenever the woman behind you with the huge eyeballs smiles herself. Or they'll get up and clap their hands when the man behind you with the plastic teeth gets up and claps his hands. And most of your voters don't even know who they are. And you're probably better off that way. Remind everybody that it's just only been one year because even the people who believe in you are getting frustrated at this point although it is for a different reason entirely than the people who don't trust you to everybody it all around just feels like well a lot more than just one year tell them i'm not tired i'm not giving up that'll motivate your true believers uh, to not give up hope just don't admit that you're as hard-headed as ever and that you're about to turn up the heat clamp down no matter how many people suffer no matter for how long in order to follow a path of change or similar to the path of Hugo Chavez than to the path of whichever president the listener and viewer prefers to insert in this spot 
keep making promises to everybody about education and health care and the environment, of course, and jobs, 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 and the economy. Uh, say some crap that you don't mean about saving small businesses by using the money that you're taxing small businesses, and also with the help of labor unions. Your voters will still believe that you're actually trying to fix the economy. Keep saying that everybody has to pay more taxes, everybody with money that is, because how can you spend more money on the people if you don't tax the people more? No, no, don't put it that way. Say stimulus. No, no, don't say that. That didn't work last time. Ah, yeah, tell them uh, they can get college educations and not have to pay for them if they work for you. People are going to love that. That makes no sense at all, and if anybody says so, well, they just don't value education, and they're cynical, skeptical, and they don't trust the government, unfounded fear of government, and sooner or later they'll be exposed for the racists that they are. Make some empty promise about more oil drilling and more windmills. Uh, say something nice about clean coal, even though it's crap. There's no such thing. And let your most loyal patriotic constituents know that you have not forgotten them and that you're not giving up on someday having an entire battalion of all gay marines. <laughs> Keep making uh, those health insurance reform promises too. And don't forget the big three public enemies, big banks, big insurance companies, and big oil. And keep cameras away from Barney Frank and tell the Clintons not to come. Oh, okay, they're not coming anyway. What are they trying to do? Distance themselves or something? Hmm. Talk about all the money you're investing in cheap solar cells and more efficient batteries and talk about the 1,200 jobs that you have created in those fields or those save jobs. At least until the government money runs out, they'll be there. Uh, no, don't talk about that. Don't worry about numbers that don't add up, really. I mean, remember, we got to collapse the system while appearing to prevent the collapse of the system and while exposing others whom we allege have attempted to collapse the system, you see, well, without anybody knowing about it and figuring it out. Tell people about some website they can go to to find out more where their money's being spent. I'll recycle that story because nobody ever went to that website. Well, they're never going to go to this website, but you can say that it was, you had a website telling them exactly where their money was going, you see. Warn Congress about lobbyists. Don't worry that nobody's going to shout, you lie, right here, right now. Come to think of it, they, they kind of did, didn't they? There was that groan, and then Obama was forced to pause and look at him. It was a comedic, entertaining moment, I must say. Oh, yeah, the balanced budget. All this while you have uh, really unbalanced the budget, you have to say that we need to balance the budget. Scold them for not balancing the budget. That makes you look like the good guy and everybody sitting in front of you like the bad guy. Tomorrow morning, most people will be listening to the right-wing wacko who points out that virtually your whole cabinet is lobbyists. You know, but he's just an entertainer, right? Make sure to talk tough about vetoes. Say stuff like, I want to hear your ideas, even though you're not going to listen to them. It'll make you look like a man of the people in the eyes of the, you know, little guys, whatever that means. And they're in front of God and everybody. This is the most important thing. You gotta do this. You gotta start to disassemble the United States Constitution. You gotta tell the American people that if Congress will not approve, oh, something about procedures that nobody will understand, you will supersede the constitutional authority of the Congress by issuing an executive order. Get everybody, including the Congress, accustomed to hearing the words executive order being used a lot more in the coming months. Reprimand the Supreme Court for their decision on political campaign finance advertising. Stir up the anger of the masses against them. Even the mere fact that the Constitution itself says that this speech is supposed to be conducted every year on the third Monday of the month of January. Only very exceptional circumstances have ever prevented this from happening, if ever. Well, tonight's Wednesday night. American Idol's on. No, 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 you are the next American Idol, Barack Hussein Obama. It's kind of like that title of that book that you or somebody else wrote, The Audacity of Hope. If that doesn't work, we can always blame Haiti. And if that doesn't work, remind all the pundits on TV, hell, you showed up for this speech last year, and you weren't even the president yet. <laughs>